throughout her reign, Queen Elizabeth II was unwavering in her dedication to her role as monarch. And for so many people here tonight, it is vital to honour and respect the role she played in our national story. It's very important the Queen has done so much for us for the past 70 years, and I think that it's our kind of duty as um, the British people and just generally to show our respect to someone who served us for 70 years. She means a family. Like since my uh, boyhood, childhood, uh, while I was in Bangladesh, I saw her through the TV. I really do feel emotional. And as a Muslim, I pray for her after my prayer today. We all knew this day would come one day, and yet it still feels shocking and it still feels profound, isn't it? Yes. How are you feeling? I think it's just a kind of mother figure to everyone, and I just, she was so, I, I can't really put it into words. As a nation, we're mourning the loss of the Queen, but for the King and his family, yeah, they have lost their mum, their grandmother, their great-grandmother, and so that's really sad for them. We, we have to remember that she was their family. The reign of King Charles III has begun. But for many, the reign of Queen Elizabeth II will never be forgotten. Tim Muffet, BBC News, at Buckingham Palace. And as people continue to arrive here at the palace, just as they did last night, I was chatting to some of the people who'd brought flowers. Uh, and one young woman, she said, she said, this was not my queen, but I wanted to bring flowers because I wanted to show my respect. And she explained that she lived in London that she was originally from Taiwan, but she said, I had such enormous respect for the Queen. And in particular, she pointed to the fact that she was so hard working and the fact that only a few days ago, as we saw, she greeted the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, uh, and this young woman and the person she was with, who was from Brazil, and he said, not my Queen either, but I had enormous respect for her. And we had to be here this morning. We had to come and pay our respects. And that just gives you a sense of, of what we're hearing from people who are coming down this morning. Uh, and as I say, many, many crowds expected here over the course of the day, and I'm sure in days to come. The new king, we know, returns to London at some point today as well. So we will have more from here at the palace. For now, Naga and Charlie, back to you. Jane, thank you very much. And as Jane said there, there is an expectation. We have been indicated that um, King Charles III will return to London. The timetable, nothing yet has been clarified. But as we get that, of course, we will bring that to you. Now, Buckingham Palace, as you've seen this morning, very much a focal point of national mourning for the Queen. But there'll be cities all across the UK who will be making their own plans. Let's go to our Midlands correspondent, Navtej Johal, who's outside Leicester Cathedral for us this morning. Navtej, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of places will be trying to work out just what to do and, and, and how they allow people to pay their respects. Tell me about plans there. Yes, absolutely. A book of condolence is going to be opening here at the Cathedral and at Leicester Town Hall later today. But this is a city like most across the UK and many across the world, which is in mourning. It's a place which has a deep level of affection for the Queen. It's where 10 years ago in 2012, she began her Diamond Jubilee tour. And I was here just a few months ago nearby at the St. Matthew's Estate for the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. And that's a place where people from around the world have come to make their home in Leicester. And hundreds of them have come out for a big Jubilee lunch on a rainy afternoon to pay their respects, to celebrate the life of the monarch. The last time, however, the Queen was here it was five years ago for Maundy Thursday. She came to Leicester Cathedral and she was greeted on that day by the Bishop of Leicester, the Right Reverend Martin Snow, who joins me this morning. Uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, Martin, just begin by telling me a little bit about your personal recollections of the Queen, because you've actually spent time with her in Sandringham, as well as uh, meeting her at the Palace and here as well. Yes, I was very privileged to be able to greet her when she arrived here in Leicester for the Maundy Thursday service at the Cathedral. 
But on a personal level, yes, I was also invited for a weekend at Sandrian with uh, the Queen uh, and Prince Philip as well. Uh, an extraordinary weekend in all sorts of different ways. Uh, uh, my memory of it in particular, uh, playing cards with the Queen. Uh, quite extraordinary, what really. Was that she, like? uh, so she taught me how to play patience, a very particular form of patience uh, that she often played when there were lots of guests around, I think. And uh, when I admitted that I didn't know how to play it, she uh, indeed taught me. So that's a memory that will live with me long. But also while I was there, I had to preach at Sandringham Church in front of the Queen and many members of the royal family as well. That was quite a scary experience, I have to say. But because she was such a person of deep faith, uh, we were then actually after the service able to have something of a conversation about that as well. Just on that point, how much do you think her faith informed the type of monarch she was, the way she carried out her duties? I think her faith was incredibly important to her uh, in all sorts of different ways. So she often expressed in her Christmas messages about how her faith carried her through many difficulties in life. I think it was part of her reason for wanting to uh, visit so many places of faith around the country, a way of trying to draw people together and remind us of what unites us in this country. And uh, yeah, her faith actually inspired her, I think, in terms of you know her role and uh, her sense of duty as well. So uh, it was very real to her. And Martin, many people across the country, across the world, feeling a deep sense of grief and sadness at yesterday's news. As somebody who deals with that regularly, how would you console them? What would you say to them in terms of helping them through that grief? I think the most important thing is to say that we all have our own ways of expressing our grief. Uh, it's not the same for everybody, and uh, for some people it will be uh, laying flowers in a very public way, for others it will be much quieter, and I think I'd want to say in particular that our churches stand ready, really, for people to come and visit, to just simply have a time of quiet, to sit, whether alone or with others. Uh, we have a special service, in fact, uh, happening tomorrow evening at half past six, St. Mary de Castro Church here in Leicester, which is a very, very simple opportunity for people to come together to express their grief in a way that is appropriate for them. Okay, Martin, thank you. And that service, just one of the ways in which Leicester is marking the passing of the Queen, along with the Book of Condolence here, which opens later today. Thank you very much.